Good afternoon, students. I wanted to read to you the rest of Benjamin Bunny. I felt like we had left, even though I told you to go read it on Hoopla, download it from your library using the Hoopla um, digital app. I felt like I left Benjamin Bunny and Peter Rabbit under the basket. So I don't know if you guys remember or not, but in part one, Benjamin Bunny and Peter Rabbit had taken the onions and they had wrapped the onions in a kerchief. Oh, and this is a kerchief and it has two little animals on it. They're not quite bunnies, they're little dogs, but that's okay. And they wrapped the onions in a kerchief and they hid under a big basket from the bunny. And the bunny smelled the onions, I mean, excuse me, the cat smelled the onions and sat on the, on the basket. And remember, the cat sat on the basket for five hours. So let's get back to the story. I cannot draw you a picture of Peter and Benjamin underneath the basket because it was quite dark and because the smell of onions was fearful. It made Peter rabbit and little Benjamin cry. The sun got round behind the wood and it was quite late in the afternoon, but still, the cat sat upon the basket. At length, there was a pitter-patter, pitter-patter, and some bits of mortar fell from the wall above. The cat looked up and saw Mr. Benjamin Bunny, that's little Benjamin's dad, prancing along the top of the wall of the upper terrace. He had a switch, that's like a little stick, he had a switch in his hand and he was looking for his son. Old Mr. Bunny had no opinion whatsoever of cats. He took a tremendous jump off the wall and onto the top of the cat, cuffed it off the basket and kicked it into the greenhouse, scratching off a handful of fur. The cat was too surprised to even scratch back. When Mr. Bunny had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. Then he came back to the basket and took his son, Benjamin, out by the ears. Then he took his son, his nephew, Peter, and he took the handkerchief of onions and he marched them out of the garden. Mr. McGregor turned about half an hour, returned about a half an hour later. He observed several things that perplexed him, that means made him think or made him wonder, like quizzically, um, unknowingly. It looked as though a small person had been walking over the garden in a pair of clogs, but only the footmarks were ridiculously little. Also, he couldn't understand how the cat got locked inside the greenhouse by locking the door on the outside. Hmm. When Peter got home, his mother forgave him because she was so glad that he had found his shoes and his coat. Cottontail and Peter folded up the handkerchief and Miss Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with the bunches of other herbs. The end. Now this story, it didn't have any pictures at the very end. So we had to use our imagination a lot. We have to draw pictures in our mind of what's happening in the story when it's being read aloud to us. Now, one of the reasons why I'm reading this to you today is to encourage you to um, download books onto your phone, your iPad, your computer. So even though you might have to stay in your house, you can still read books on your digital devices through your library. How cool is that? All right, have a great day.